I'm so excited this morning for three reasons. The most important reason is that we're here to gather to worship God. The second reason is that we have very good friends with us who are visiting this morning. Warren and Lynette, would you please stand? And we want to war welcome Warren and Lynette back to us. So Warren is going to be preaching this morning, and Lynette is bringing us a beautiful uh, song that she wrote, a worship song that she wrote, uh, called Interrupt Us. And it's a beautiful song that she wrote during the pandemic. So we're so grateful to have you worshiping with us this morning. And then the third reason is because it's Memorial Day weekend. So happy Memorial Day weekend. Would you please stand and join me in the call to worship? Blessed are they who attend to the way of the Lord. They are privileged to hear the very words of God and to fellowship with the Son. God is gracious to speak through the Son, and the Son is faithful in His speaking. Amen. And please remain standing. Our hymn is Come Christians Join to Sing. to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in confession and please join me as we do our prayer of confession this morning Lord we admit that when your truth seems to us we turn our ears away forgive us we, we pretend we cannot hear the guidance we so desperately need forgive us when we think the words of someone else are better and more pleasant than your words, forgive us. Help us to love and desire the words you have for us. Help us to hear what we need to hear. Help us to seek after your truth and build our lives upon that alone. 
Amen. Now hear these words of assurance. The Lord is ready to teach us. God is patient and kind and will speak what we need to hear. The Lord will forgive our mistrust and draw us closer to the heart of God. The Lord is faithful. Hear these words and believe them. Amen. Now, let us stand and pass the peace and greet each other on this wonderful day today. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And uh, we'll now have our children's message uh, by Warren G. Good to be with you here at Hopewell. Really, really good. Uh, we got you Thursday, and um, I said to Lynette, before the rain comes, I'm going to quickly go for a run. I was reminded that we are back in New York because the cars here try and hit you. <laughs> Seriously. They look at you in North Carolina, they stop and they look at you. Here they're looking at you because they're aiming. It was, it was a good reminder. Boys and girls, uh, are you coming down? Okay, yeah, come on down. Is my mic on? Okay. Apparently it was off the first service. Don't worry. Come have a seat there, right in front. Who can tell me what this is? A rock, yeah. And what do we know about rocks? They are hard to break, yes. What else about rocks? They are rocks. <laughs> yeah, yep. They heavy, yep, yep. They solid, right? They don't break easily. Uh, are there any builders here? No, okay, all right. Well, we'll come back there. What is this? Sand, okay, and what do we know about sand? Soft, yeah. They are tiny rocks. So I guess they're rocks for ants. Maybe, maybe, okay. Now, if you think about this, have you ever been to the beach? Have you ever built a castle? What happens if the water hits the castle? It falls down, okay, all right. So this is probably not a good, what's the word? Good foundation. substance for a foundation, right? Whereas a rock is probably a good thing for a foundation. Which one of these would you build your house on? Sorry? You would build it on the rock? Okay, cool. So today, we're going to learn uh, in the church about how Jesus says he tells us things and that if we listen to him, it's a good thing. We've made a good choice. In listening to him, it's like building our house on this rock. If we don't listen, it's like building our house on the sand. So now we're going to play a little game. Who knows the game rock, paper, scissors? Who knows it? Okay. So uh, we're all going to look at people. We're all going to play it. But we're going to play rock, and sand, okay? So you can either choose, we're going to go one, two, three, and you go rock or sand. You can choose, all right? But let me tell you, rock beats sand. All right? All right? You get it? All right, everybody look at somebody. Look at somebody, get ready. Get ready. And here, on three. So one, two, three. Okay, did anybody do sand? You did sand? Children, there's always one. <laughs> okay, but it's, it's a fun game, but it reminds us sometimes in life, 
We play games with the choices. We have the choice of rock, what God says, or sand, which is what we decide. Rock always beats sand. Okay. We're not doing it again in the second service, but we did it again the first service. And I won't mention names like Jeff Thompson, <laughs> but somebody did sand even on the second round. Okay. So uh, that's, that's it. Children, listen to what God says, and it will be the right thing to do. Glory, glory. Thank you. The hymn is Take My Life and Let It Be. announcements this morning. The uh, congregational meeting will be on June 13th, Sunday, June 13th, and that's going to be at 1145, so directly after um, this second worship service, the uh, foundation service. And the meeting will be about 45 minutes to an hour, not sure exactly how long, but it's an important meeting because we have some good news to announce and um, some updates to give you, so make sure you come Sunday, June 13th. Also, we're doing Wednesday night worship again out at the uh, tent every Wednesday night at 6.30, or sorry, every other Wednesday night, every first, third, and fifth Wednesday. And uh, this Wednesday is a particularly special Wednesday night worship because Lynette and Warren will be worshiping with us on Wednesday night, so we're really grateful for your, your presence there. So please come on Wednesday night. Are there any other 
announcements this morning that you'd like to bring to everyone's attention. If not, we will conti- continue our service of worship with our tithes and offerings. to 
corrupt us to see what you see. salvation to a world that needs to know you. Amen. You may be seated. Um, I just wanted to just share with the congregation, this is not in the program this morning, but I've just been uh, moved in the worship service this morning at 830, and I still feel moved in the worship service this morning to just share the good news of Jesus Christ. And for each person that's here this morning, God loves you, Jesus loves you, and the Holy Spirit is within you and has you in his hands and cares for you. And as we go through this worship service this morning, uh, I would just ask that you would just tune your heart and your spiritual ear to what the Spirit is saying to you this morning, because he speaks to each one of us, and we have a choice to make of whether we'll hear and obey or we'll just go along our way. And I would challenge us to hear what the Spirit says to the church. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Percy. I'm also going to go off script here, and I want to invite you, Lynette, to share your story behind that, that beautiful hymn that you just wrote. So Lynette wrote this uh, praise hymn that you just heard, uh, Interrupt Us. It's a beautiful concept for the Holy Spirit to interrupt us. Would you be willing just to kind of say a couple words about how that came to you? I put her on the spot. I apologize. <laughs> Yeah, it was such a privilege to just share that song. It's actually the first time that I've sung in months in front of uh, the congregation, but also just that particular song. Um, yeah, I think I was sharing with Doug and I think Ron and Trish, a few other people, that when I was still at the church, I felt, and that was before the whole COVID thing happened and everything happened, I felt that God had laid this song on my heart and these words, just the concept of listening and stopping and just being still. And sometimes when I don't do that, 
It's like God brings something that helps me to listen and hear his voice. Um, but the song came out of just a prayer asking him to make me more aware of him. First for him to, in, to interrupt my life. Um, and as I was just writing the words, I felt like this is a song for the church. This is a song for us at Hopewell at the time. And I felt God said, you need to share this. And I just didn't. And I just didn't. And um, I'm so glad that he's given me the opportunity just to be obedient to him, that I could share this. Um, yeah, just a reminder to just to, to, just to stop and then invite him just to speak. Because he's always speaking in our lives. So, yeah, I'm just so glad I can share that today. Thank you. Thank you. That's beautiful. I was telling her she's got to publish that. Well, as we go to God in prayer, um, I want us to just spend a moment uh, remembering that this is, this is Memorial Day weekend. And Memorial Day weekend is when we remember all of the men and women who've died while serving in the U.S. Armed Forces over the years. And so I want us to um, I want to just take a moment to pause and to pray for those in our own families who've died over the years while serving and to acknowledge their service. And um, the person I'm going to pray for this morning is Gary Leonard, my cousin, who was actually my dad's cousin. He died in World War II. He was, uh, he was a navigator in a, in a plane that was shot down in France. And um, he died, um, you know, during the war. So that's a story that's come down through our family, and um, I'll be remembering Gary this morning. What I'd like to do now is just invite anyone um, to kind of call out the name of a, a loved one, a family member, or a friend over the years who's uh, died in combat or has um, maybe, um, maybe died since serving uh, that we'd like to remember in prayer this morning. William Haight. George Phillips. Thomas Doyle. Charles, what was the last name? Graymore? George Scholes. As we go to God in prayer, I'd like to invite you to, um, to say uh, just simply, we give you thanks, O God. When I pause, just say, we give you thanks, O God. Let us pray. Um, actually, before I go into prayer, are there any other prayer concerns of members of the congregation that you'd like to bring to our attention, people who need our intercessory prayers or, or celebrations. One is uh, Lorraine and Terry just celebrated their 20th anniversary in the renewal of their vows, so congratulations. Uh, that's a joy this morning, we remember. Sandy. So prayers for Sandy's family at uh, the, the remembrance of her sister's life, which is going to be on June 12th. What was your sister's name? Sherry. Sherry. Stephanie. So we remember this morning also those who've returned from wars affected severely by PTSD and remember, remember their service. Thank you. Let us pray. 
And again, the refrain is, we give you thanks, O God. Let us give thanks, God, for the land of our birth, for our country, with all of its chartered liberties, for all the wonder of our country's story. We give you thanks. God, we ask your blessing upon all of the leaders in our nation and in our state, for all those in years past who have, and in, in the present, who have labored for our country. For those in all times and places who have been true and brave and have lived upright lives and have ministered to others in need, we give you thanks. For those who have served our country in its hour of need, especially for those who gave their lives in service to this country, we give you thanks, God. Almighty and merciful God, as we remember your servants, remembering with gratitude their courage and strength, we hold, you, we hold before you those who still mourn, bless their families with your comfort and mercy as this day brings those memories back of those they've lost. May it also, be, may it also bring your consolation and assurance that their loved ones are now alive forever in your presence. We give you thanks. Especially this morning, we remember Fred Schmidt, we remember William Haight, George Phillips, Thomas Doyle, Charles Greatheart, and George Scholes, and Gary Leonard. And Lord, we pray for all those who are sick, recovering from surgery, awaiting test results. We pray for Bob Blos this morning, who had cancer surgery recently. We pray for continued healing for Kim Skorlick. Pray for Michelle Baer after her surgery. We pray for George and Marianne Blash, Harriet Cole, Neely Jerome. I give thanks, God, for the prayers for what I'm going through with my Lyme's disease or whatever this is, for Jack Martyr, for Kyle Napolitano. And God, we also bring our celebrations and joy to you. We give thanks for Laureen and Terry's 20th anniversary and for their renewed vows yesterday. It's such a blessing to be able to celebrate that here in the body of faith. And God, we, we pray the prayer that you've taught us together by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We also pray for Kennedy this week. We ask for your prayers. Who's a, a three-year-old with leukemia. Yeah. Let's say a prayer right now for Kennedy. Let's pray. God, we pray that you'd um, help to heal and bless Kennedy, three years old, who's... Um, just begun treatment for leukemia. And uh, we pray for your, your complete healing. God, I also want to continue to pray for Lynette and her healing from the, the symptoms she's still struggling with from COVID. And, um, and, and I also failed to mention, God, I, we, we lift up and pray for all of those people who've served in our armed forces and have come home after service and have suffered from, um, from post-traumatic stress disorder. So we we pray that you'd be with and heal um, everyone in their service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's, let's pray. <clears throat> Gracious God, your word is like refreshing rain. You teach us and admonish us and bless us. Open our eyes and our ears to hear, our hearts to obey. Enliven us with what we are given through your, t through your word today. In your name, Jesus, amen. As I mentioned earlier, it is good to be in New York. Uh, although I will admit the North Carolina winter, oh, it's, it was good. It was good. But um, I wanted to start this morning just by uh, Wednesday, we were in Texas, Lynette and I, 
and we're visiting churches down there and sharing. And um, Wednesday, we got a call from Pastor Doug and just said, I'm struggling. Can, can you preach? And uh, at first, I was, I was uh, a word I learned in New York, discombobulated, <laughs> and uh, thought about it and just prayed and was like, yes, I, I would love to. What a, what a privilege to be with you here in worship and uh, just to enjoy God's word together. Um, the other thing I learned in Texas, I went for uh, a few runs there and was running with my sunglasses on when it was overcast and just missed a copperhead. I saw it when I was in mid-flight and um, stood there afterwards just looking at the snake thinking, wow, it could have been so different. Um, and actually saw three copperheads on this one road. I will not run there again. Um, I have the pictures, uh, and that's all I want to remember there. But uh, we, we then got praying about this morning. And wanted to share a little bit about our leaving here. Aren't you Cheryl? Hello. Uh, our leaving here, uh, Lynette and I got to a, a point in... December, January last year, where God had shared to both of us uh, that our time at Hopewell had come to an end. And, and that was hard for us to admit and to accept. Uh, we were both comfortable and, uh, and happy. And all our American friends were in New York. And God just kept saying, I've told you. I've told you what to do. I've told you what to do. And it was a challenge to send the email and, and, and just to work through that um, because we did not have the answer as to what was next. And I'll explain a little bit, but it was like people would go, so what are you going to do? I don't know. But all we knew was that God had told us uh, that our time had come to an end and we needed to trust him and take that step. God mentioned in our prayer times, we just both felt God kept saying to us, uh, you're going to go through a season of rest, and then I'll reveal to you. And I really struggled with that. I struggled to share that, um, because who here does not want a season of rest? So how do I say, you know, this is, this is what we're going to do? And um, we actually, we were going to New Zealand. That all got shut down the week before we were going. And a friend called us and said, where are you going? And we said, we don't know. And he said, I've got a pastor friend in Tennessee. I want to give him a call. And he called this pastor friend and just said, um, how's it going there? And the pastor said, it's going really well, but we feel God is going to send us people and we're going to minister to them. And, and that's all they knew. And he said, well, that's interesting because that's why I'm calling. I've got friends that or looking for a place to go to. And we ended up jumping in our car. It was really rushed. Uh, we jumped in our car because things in Pennsylvania were closing down, and there was all this... this it, we just got messages from people, you better come now. They might not let you in Tennessee. If you remember, they didn't like us from New York. And um, we had these big yellow things on the front and back of our car that let them know that we were from New York. And um, we actually got a flat on the way <laughs> and um, <clears throat> I went to get it repaired, and the guy came out and repaired, and then he was like, where are you from? The license plate, I'm like, uh, we're from New York. And um, <laughs> he walked and he grabbed this bottle of hand sanitizer, and he just started wiping himself down, and he grabbed the rag and started wiping handles and all that. I was like, okay, got to get out of here. Um, but we got down there, and eight different people contacted us and said, I don't know what's going on, but I was praying for you, and I, I just feel God wants you to know that he wants you to rest. And we kept, this word kept coming up, and I was like, oh man, um, didn't have an idea of what that meant. And so we entered this time not knowing where God was leading us. A week before the end of this time that we felt that we needed to be on, uh, Lynette came through and said, I just feel God wants us to pray about J-Life. 
JLIF was the ministry we were with before we came to New York. And we prayed about it, and as we were praying about it, we just kept getting excited about this. And um, there were a few things that were not so exciting. The one is that there's no salary. <laughs> but, but we just kept getting more and more excited. So we contacted them and we said, we're feeling this. Does this resonate with you? And they said, that is very interesting because we've been praying for a couple in North America. And so piece by piece, God just started answering what he had told us in December and January. We've now joined J-Life. J-Life starts, uh, stands for Jesus' life and trains and equips youth pastors, pastors, church leadership, and anybody that wants to learn about disciple-making uh, in their ministry. This past year, as you know, has been difficult uh, for a number of reasons. Um, but in that, we ended up landing in a little city called Salisbury, North Carolina. And um, it's about 40 minutes north of Charlotte. Everybody knows Charlotte. Salisbury is an interesting place because we moved there because a number of our partner churches are around that area. So we moved there, and every time we would meet with somebody, they would just say, just be careful, don't go to Salisbury. And we were like, wow, this is great. And um, it's, it's been great. I, I started running with some guys down there, and the one thing they said is, whatever you do, just don't run in this area. And I'm like, I run there every afternoon. Um, God has been good. In this difficult time, God has been good. We've had no issues. We've got incredible neighbors and, and are seeing great things. With J-Life, uh, it, during the pandemic, I want to share a few stories with you as we go into God's word. But um, we're in 23 countries in Africa, and we consider ourselves in a country when an indigenous leader has been trained up and released as the country leader. So J-Life doesn't lead in the countries. Each country leads itself. During the pandemic, we added three new countries. Chad, which is a Muslim country, um, which has brought its own challenges. But there has been incredible breakthrough where pastors are coming and working together in reaching the people of Chad. Ethiopia, we released a country leader in Ethiopia. In 2020, they planted 1,500 churches and house churches. That in my Western mind, is mind-boggling. That's four to five new groups of people coming together to worship a day. They are now training and equipping the leaders of all those groups. Malawi, we released a country leader in Malawi. I've got to get that. They've been going out and showing the Jesus film a film about Jesus where at the end they present the gospel and invite people into a relationship with God. They've been doing this night after night during this year, uh, seeing hundreds of people come to know God as their Lord and Savior. They got arrested the other night, probably a month ago, and were thrown in jail overnight <clears throat> because the police were told that they were stirring up a political movement. And uh, they stayed in jail overnight the police went out and surveyed people what they were doing. They came back and they said, no, you were sharing Jesus with people. They were released. The next night, they were out showing the Jesus film. They have just had their first ladies' conference where 119 women came to know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. We had a guy, Dr. Emmanuel, come to a training in Cameroon last year at the beginning of 2020. He heard the message and said, well, I need to go home and disciple my family. He went home and started discipling his family, and then he thought, actually, I'm at work eight hours a day. I should disciple my colleagues. So he started discipling his colleagues, and the, the business that they were in, he's a doctor, so I'm assuming it's medical, but uh, the business started impacting the community around the area. Well, in the middle of last year, he's just been voted in as mayor of the city of Adia in Cameroon of one million people because they said, we want what is happening in your community. God is at work 
God is really, really at work. In Cameroon, another lady came to training. She came with her husband, who is the pastor. And at the end of the training, she said, this is not just for my husband. I need to make disciples. She went back to her town, and she invited 20 pastor's wives, got them together and shared, shared the training and said, we need to start discipling our ladies. Those 20 ladies have all started groups in their churches now of discipling their ladies. God is at work. Which brings us to this morning's text. Pastor Doug is starting a new series. It, it's a summer series. A summer series. Because it's summer in New York. Just go outside. <laughs> I packed one sweatshirt. I'm a slow learner. But a summer series about being doers and not just hearers, or obeying the teachings of Jesus. And this morning's passage is in Luke chapter 6, verse 46 to 49. This is Jesus speaking, and he says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do the things I say? I will show you what someone is like who comes to me, hears my words, and acts on them. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. When the flood came, the river crashed against the house and couldn't shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears and does not act is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The river crashed against it and immediately it collapsed. And the destruction of that house was great. Thanks be to God for this, his holy word. The title for this morning I'd like to present is, is it really that simple? Like if you look at this passage, it, it just seems so simple. Is it really that simple? Surely not. I don't know about you, but that rock sand game that's going to catch on like fire. I can see it. It's going to be a game changer. But uh, I mean, I choose sand more than I should when I know rock always wins. Wisdom, choosing God's way. Have you got, I would like to stop for 30 seconds. I want you to grab, I, I know that they're not in the, in the pews anymore, but if you've got a, a pen and a piece of paper in your bag, grab that now. If you do not have a handbag, you should get one. But, <laughs> but grab your cell phone. And I should have said this in the first service, if you grab your cell phone, because you're going to need to write something down. If you grab your cell phone, please silence it. We uh, raised $100 for youth missions in the first service. Please silence it. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where somebody told you something and you didn't listen to them and it turned out exactly how they said. And um, they usually go, well, I told you. Have you ever been in a situation like that? We were choosing dates to come to New York. And Lynette said, let's look at July. It's warmer in July. And uh, I said, Lynette, it's warm in New York in June. And um, I packed my one sweatshirt. And needless to say, Lynette was right. And I feel this passage is like that. God has told us so many things, and we look back and we go, oh, he was right. This is not the only passage where God has shared this with us. If we look at uh, Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, it says, This book of instruction must not depart from your mouth. You must recite it day and night. Some versions say meditate on it day and night, so that you may carefully observe everything written in it. 
Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 to 3 says, How happy is the man who does not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path of sinners, or join the group of mockers. Instead, his delight is in the Lord's instruction, and he meditates on it day and night. He is like a tree planted beside streams of water that bears its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Jeremiah 17, verse 5 to 8 says, The man who trusts in mankind, who makes human flesh his strength and turns his heart from the Lord, is cursed. That's a strong word. He is like a juniper in the Arabah. He cannot see when good comes, but dwells in the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land where no one lives. I had to look up what a juniper is. Does anybody know what a juniper is? It's a tree, and uh, it doesn't have leaves. It has needles. What did you call it? It's got berries, yeah, but it's got like those pins like Christmas trees. And the Araba is like a deserted place just south of the Dead Sea. So you get, you get the picture of it's not flourishing. Verse 7 says, The man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence indeed is the Lord, is blessed. He will be like a tree planted by water. It sends its roots out towards the stream. It doesn't fear when heat comes, and its foliage remains green. It will not worry in a year of drought or cease producing fruit. Time and time again, God reminds us in his words to listen to his instruction, and not just to listen to it, but to heed it, to do it. So my question for you this morning is, what is the last thing God has asked you to do? And I want you to make a note of that. And if you cannot remember, ask him. He'll remind you, what is the last thing that you feel God has asked you to do? Make a note of that. God is always speaking, and he's always speaking to all of us. Just sometimes I've found in my life when I'm not listening to what God is saying or, or when I'm ignoring what God is saying, I slowly tune God out because it's a lot more comfortable. And so God is speaking. Taking heed and doing what God has asked us to do takes effort. It is not easy, um, but it is the sturdiest foundation. Why I say it takes effort is because there's a known quote that says a river always follows the path of less resistance. And that is not the path we want to follow. So this morning I want to share a few things that Jesus has told us that we should act on and not just hear. The first thing uh, Percy shared this morning, sharing just the good news, that God, God knows us, God loves us, and wants to have a relationship with each and every one of us. Uh, Jesus actually says in John chapter 14, verse 6, that he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. Nobody comes to the Father but through him. That is something we need to act on, we need to do, and not just hear. The other thing Jesus gives us is the Pharisees come to him and say, uh, out of the 644 laws, hello, Lorraine. Out of the 644 laws, which is the most important? Which is the greatest commandment? And Jesus says, love the Lord your God with every part of yourself, with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. The second greatest commandment is just like it, love your neighbor as yourself. These are things we need to act on and not just hear. The third thing is that Jesus then carries on in John chapter 14, verse 15. He says, if you love me, you will obey my commands. Now, I don't know about you, but it's easy to say, Jesus, I love you, because I know with everything that's what I should do. But I don't know about you, when I hear, maybe a parent with a young kid would be able to explain this better, but when you say it's a command or because I told you, there's like a little bit of resistance. I don't know if you've experienced that. 
But Jesus, I mean, that's plain. John 14, 15, if you love me, you will obey my commands. Verse 16 carries on there is that something else Jesus promises is that he will ask the Father who will give us another counselor to be with you forever. He is the spirit of truth. The world is unable to receive him because it doesn't see him or know him, but you do know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I am coming to you. Jesus promises us that the Holy Spirit will always be with us, will always lead, will always guide us. So what is it that he's asked you to do? James, in James chapter 1, who grew up as Jesus' brother. Can you imagine that? Like, which kid is going to get in trouble? It's James, okay? But James comes to know Jesus as his personal Lord and Savior after he dies on the cross and is resurrected. But he says in James chapter 1, he says, Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Because if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man looking at his own face in a mirror. For he looks at himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But the one who looks intently into the perfect law of freedom and perseveres in it is not a forgetful hearer, but one who does good works. This person will be blessed in what he does. I shared, the, I shared the first story about how God has been leading us. But I want to share another story. I don't know if you all know, but I, I enjoy running. And Lynette says I can turn any conversation into about running. Uh, well, on Wednesday, we got onto our flight. And this guy got on, and he had this sweatshirt on. It said 2007 Boston Marathon. And already I'm thinking, we're going to have a conversation. You, you and I, we're, we're going to chat about running. Boston Marathon is like the marathon. You have to qualify to get in. And um, I didn't mention his name, but Matt Williams from this congregation has run the Boston Marathon. In fact, in, and in an incredible time, but I won't go into too much detail. I see this guy. And I'm like, we're going to chat because I want to do the Boston Marathon. Well, and I'm sitting there, and he sits down right in front of me across an aisle. So it's like, perfect. We're going to chat. There's extra leg room in front of him. We're going to talk. And uh, I'm praying. I'm, I'm praying. I'm saying, I just feel I need to chat to this guy. I'm praying, Lord, what? Is there something you're wanting to share with him? And I feel feel like a strong sense that he's putting his trust in a lot of things. Like, he's, he's looking for fulfillment in a lot of things. And I, and I feel like God is saying, I will fulfill everything you, you're desiring. And I lent, oh, no, I didn't. I actually chickened out of leaning out and chatting to him. And as we took off, he pulled out his iPad, <clears throat> and he was looking at a whole lot of different things, and I was like, this guy really is searching. I need to chat with him. Really, really searching. And the entire flight, he was busy from one thing to the next. And um, I, I'm sorry to say that I never chatted to him. As we were getting off the plane, he disappeared. He was gone. And um, Lynette and I actually sat in different rows because it now cost you $42 each if you want to sit next to each other. We're like, no, you go, <laughs> I go. So we saved $84. But Lynette says, did you see the guy with the Boston Marathon shirt? And I knew I'd missed that opportunity. I share the story because it's easy to share the first story about how God challenged me, challenged us to step out in faith, but how we often miss the day-to-day -day things. I often miss the day-to-day -day things. 
I believe God has spoken to each one of us and He's asked us to do things, but we need to act upon them. Again, what has God asked you to do that you haven't done yet? If you haven't written it down, write it down and do it. There's no better week than this week. I find in my life sometimes I'm asking God and he tells me something and so then I ask the next thing. But he's told me this and sometimes I have to do this before I can get that. I challenge you that in this week, take steps and do what God has asked you to do. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your patience with us. Uh, just how you, you express, why do we call you Lord, Lord, but don't do what you've asked us to do. Lord, please give us the courage and the boldness to step out. Help us. Help us be obedient. And uh, in that, just to see how you are working. Pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. The closing hymn is Christ Be My Leader. Tuning into what Christ is trying to say to you, what God is trying to speak to you in Scripture and through the Holy Spirit in your heart as you pray. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace now and forever. Amen. <clears throat>